Hello and welcome to another video of no code app development using Google Firebase and AppGyver. In the last video, we discussed about how to set up a Postman API in order to populate the user favorite collection in the Firebase. In this video, we are gonna implement the same API that we implemented on the fire on the postman on the firebase so on the app guy one so let's do that so the step number one and the, we are we are missing a few key details here so we need to ensure that page parameters have been passed and app variables are properly created so i go back on the course details page and in the course details page I will go to variables and app variables are properly defined, but in page parameters, I only have param group. So I'm gonna add param underscore group ID and I'll keep it at text and click on save. So now group and group ID and then user email and user ID are from app variables, which is as per the design that we put together next step i'm going to click on view and add a plus icon for now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a, a container on top of this and then i can add a row inside the container and i'm going to pick this add to one cell and I'm going to add icon which is here to the other container and then I'm going to change the icon by clicking on the icon name so when I added icon I click on here it gives me a pop-up and then I'm going to add the plus sign you see here the plus sign for now i'm not going to make it more complicated if it is available show a minus if it is not available show a plus for now i'm not going to doing i'm not going to do that complication i'm going to make keep it very simple and then i'm going to make sure that uh, you know this is aligned to the uh, right side so the plus sign i want to align it on the uh, right side. I believe this is how you should align. Probably I can do it in a in the middle, or maybe uh, this is the testing right. So I am going to align it to the right side. So when I click on plus, it should add. Step number two. I'm going to click on this icon, and you see the icon one at the bottom, and you see the component tab. I have to define. An event that will occur on this component tab. The event that will occur on this component tab is creating or requesting an HTTP. So you have HTTP request and I add it like this. Now, the HTTP on the top is the is a success and at the bottom is failure. So, and how do you know this? Click on this, on the outputs, you would see the details so what i'll do is i'll add an alert so alert for the top and alert for error handling so i add alert like this add alert like this and i click on the first one and in the properties i say uh, course added as favorites and in the dialog i say error for now very simple now i want to request and change this http type so what i'm going to do is first of all i'm going to make this method as patch for the http request and then i click on this url abc click on formula now on the left hand side what you're seeing is app variables and page parameters from the postman copy this and paste 
now i am going to make it as string so till the favorites it's going to be a string and then plus this is also going to be a string and then like this and then plus this two number is going to change and then plus and dot json so i need to change the number 2 number 0 number 0 is the group id the so group id is going to be coming from the page parameters group id and number 2 is going to come from the app variable user id that's it correct now i am going to copy this url and paste it in the video description section below so that you can use it for your analysis if in case of errors i click on save so i clicked on http created the url patch now i have to define the body so now i go back to postman this is the body that i have to define so i take copy it go to optional inputs make sure header is nothing and in the request body i go in here i click on formula i go in here and paste it now instead of the google big query i am going to say page parameters param group right and instead of instead of group id 0 i am going to say page parameters group id and then instead of user id 2 i am going to say app variable user id and instead of the user email i'm going to say app variable user email so there you go so i was able to create a, a a patch the body like this click on save as soon as i click on save just validate one more time the url is there patch and everything is done click on save now remember the variable page variable has been created which is the group id but it is not been passed yet so where it is coming from as in the previous videos it is coming from the home screen i click on this click on open page and you see that there is a cross mark next obsolete okay so param group id i click on this click on data item in repeat click on current and you see that id is incompatible because the id is number but the the thing the parameter wants it to be a text so i'm going to create a formula in the formula i'm going to say string so i'm going to convert a number to a string currently repeated items in data and the current id and like this so this is their current id click on save and there you go i can get rid of this so string repeated current id click on save now if i click on launch let's see what happens it ask me to log in i'm going to use user2 at app.com the password click on login it says 2 i need to remove that alert later now big data and machine learning or let's say big google big query i click on here i click on this add button it says course added as fav go back to the firebase and you see this is added let's try for one so one let's go back here 
click on home and then big data and machine learning click on add added as favorites go back in here you see a two appears now what we need to do probably in the next video is we're going to show the users their favorite courses that is coming in the next video again thank you for watching